Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my world. This is the world of Wayne, and we got we got a special guest in here tonight. Look, Phil from Spruverse, who <laughs> actually joined me in the workshop. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> We're all good tonight. Svee, well done for getting that. And I've got to ask, what is your impressions of Ghostbusters today? I saw your little mini review, but uh, if you're in tears, I'm taking it. It's uh, it, it has been really good. I'm hoping you can hear us because it uh, looks blurry. We're not blurry. We just uh, put a different camera angle on. So uh, what I'm seeing on my screen is lovely and clear. Well, I'm glad I look blurry. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> so, so Phil's come, and come to visit me in Corby so we don't have to worry about dropouts or um, echoing volume because we're both sharing the same microphone today. <laughs> and uh, it, we've had a great day. We've, we've actually watched like half of Jaws today because uh, we're going to be looking at the Orca build, uh, which should be fun. So uh, there you go. Are we blurry? Someone says very blurry. I don't know why we're blurry. Are we blurry, people? Or is it just uh, Jimmy Jones who's got the blur? Oh, Simplord says uh, we're, we're blurry as well. You shouldn't be. <laughs> we'll see. You can still see us, though. So we're good. Everyone saying hello, Phil. Oh, good evening, Put all. the drinks away. We've just, we've just, uh, I've got a coat tonight because I'm going to be driving later. Uh, Phil's on the <laughs> Heineken. I'm on the, I'm on the Heineken. So, so we're, we're all good. Looking good and sounding good. That's what I think. And everyone saying not blurry. That's all good. So how the devil is everyone? Now tonight I did have some merch on the map, but I haven't prepared them uh, because I didn't have the locations map on. So I will be doing that on Tuesday because we've got the live stream on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, how the devil is everyone? Are we all good? They must have Vaseline on the screens, all clear here. See, Gary, that's perfect. Thank you, mate. Because as you notice, we are running a little bit late because we were having a lovely apple crumble and uh, Mrs. Roller Wayne's made us a lovely sausage and mashed dinner. So uh, sorry we're a little bit late there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Christian from Grantham. <laughs> Let's give it up big time. Hello, Christian from Grantham. Now let's get cracking. <laughs> this is brand new information. There we go, Christian. I've managed to make sure I've turned the button off tonight because I am going to be going over um, to the other camera. Now, the Orca build uh, has been something in the works pretty much since Wanderfest last year, which was May, wasn't it? Yeah, June, like, yeah. Yeah, May, May, June time. So, <laughs> yeah. so Phil saw this, and if you haven't seen the video on Phil's channel, then by all means go over to Spruverse and just check his Wanderfest video out, and you'll just see him ogling it for like half the video. And you've seen pictures of it before, and I'll put some on the screen afterwards as well, but it is uh, absolutely uh, crazy absolutely crazy and when you actually see this it, 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 there's so much that we can do to this to make it like absolutely perfect which is partly the reason why we ended up watching jaws today so we can see uh what it looks like so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the main body of the uh, ship at the moment now this was actually sculpted by bill weiger and i think i've put the comment in before billweiger.com check out some of the other sculpts that he's done because they are absolutely amazing but uh yeah, what was your impressions when you first saw it? Oh, it just, it just blew me away. I, it, the, the detail is extraordinary. Yeah. And the way he finished it was even more extraordinary. He's an incredible sculptor, and he's an artist as well. Mm -hmm. And so he was meticulous about the paint and about every aspect and every detail of it. So, I mean, to see it in person, it's just you, you can't stop looking at it. it. It's pretty amazing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it's looking like on the camera and this camera might be a bit washed out so i'll uh just gonna have a check of it yep it's a bit washed out so i'm gonna actually pick it up so this is the main body of the orca here stand by i'm just gonna move my camera over here i just want to see how that looks because my screen's a bit dark a little bit washed out one second i'm gonna fix that see look i hadn't set up the cameras at all so we can uh turn down the exposure just a touch i think that might be a good Let's try that again. Ah, there we go. So this is the main body of the boat. This is absolutely awesome. Now, we've been having a lot of talk today about how we're going to deal with this, haven't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to a lot to get your head around because this isn't sort of one. This isn't sort of like a boat that you can just start painting and get on with it because obviously there's parts to go on here. We've got the the seating area here which detaches. I know over there, Phil. I don't know if you've got some of that. And it's got loads and loads of. I keep thinking the cameras here. We've got loads and loads of parts that have got to go onto this, so we can't just start painting the ship uh, as you would a normal model. We're going to have to paint it from this section here, the interior cabin, to go out for the rest of the boat here now 
that's just the main body and i'm saying that's probably about a foot and a half perhaps what do you reckon yeah definitely yeah about a foot and a half um this bit's quite light but as soon as we have uh, all the other attachments to it you can see uh, what's going on there we got um what do you want to see uh, the masts and the, the cabin oh okay i'm gonna need a big <laughs> what's that made at roadrunner this is this is resin so this has been a resin mold but but it doesn't mean we're going to be using resin for the whole thing um because phil's got some other parts here that uh, has either been fabricated or he's bought together which are things like chain for the anchor we've got the what did we call the things where they tie the ropes to to uh, they had a name at the back of the, oh, the davids the davids they got yeah. the davids that we've got as a separate thing as well um pretty pretty amazing stuff but look this is like the entrance to the to the cabins there all the windows we've got the parts here for the chimney flue we've got the parts for the barrels here which we need to put on here's the I think they call this the this is I don't know if it's the crow's nest or whatever this is the roof of the um it's like the the cabin yeah this is where uh look at that check that out now this is going to be going I'm going to give you an idea where this is going Robert Beveridge has asked what do you think of the workshop oh the workshop is awesome it's a great space and uh, it's so much bigger than you think it is um I love it there you go you get the idea now so that's going on top and we got more parts <laughs> more parts <laughs> are you okay taking more parts? yeah 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 we're all good okay so of course oops there we go these are the barrels as you can see there each one's got to be individually now you'll probably notice at the bo bottom of the barrels here they've got these lugs on here when we've actually got the forward section that they sit in you have got some lugs for these to actually plug into which i will show you just there whether we use that or not is another thing because again after watching jaws today there might be some things that we want to change around there might be a chance that we're going to be using some real wood on this rather than painting the resin to look like wood as well i think that's the, the idea you jaws from the front oh yeah so here is the jaws that are mounted to the front the steering loads of these little details here look check all of that out it's going to be we are well, we've discussed about electrifying it yeah yeah so we're well, going to have lights for uh, well we thanks to jeff fink the wonderful jeff fink he created an stl file for us because it didn't come with the uh the lamp so we printed i printed a couple of different scales uh of the lamp these are excellent so this is the internal um that hangs uh over the uh the banquette and the table where they uh they sat that's that great scene where they're sharing each other's scars from their various battles with fish <laughs> but these these are just crying out to have lamps in them and to uh, illuminate it ladders there is some cleanup work that's going to need doing on this this is another thing that we might be fabricating uh yeah. out of metal uh a little bit bent that one uh this is the uh did we figure this is the winch didn't we yeah the that's winch the top this is the winch pole for the shark cage uh we've got some more details here dials control boards radios yeah um here's the uh oh Jeff, jeffrey's on on chat tonight they've turned that brilliant jeff oh yeah, yeah. Hi, we <laughs> need your help on some other things jeff <laughs> yeah we've looked today there's, there's going to be a, we're going to need a lot of help from this decals <laughs> decals is another thing we've been looking at as well this is actually the shark cage you can see a lot of work to do in there because we've got the resin in there to get rid of as well so that's to do so here's his seat this is the seat now the seat that quint has when he's fishing and that he catches the shark which breaks the line um it's amazing that we didn't even realize that it actually appears and disappears through the whole film <laughs> so we are going to be putting it in but it, it one minute it's there the next minute it's not it's, it's it's pretty crazy trying to find it but again we've got the uh now i just discovered something here wayne okay here are the arms for the chair look oh they're, wow they're actually right there okay that's cool and these are the tops for the mast yeah that's okay the tops for the mast so tops for the mast arms for the chair and we've got uh, a stack of books by the look at it. toolbox and books there which again is in the cabin that's how much detail this is going into yeah it's extraordinary here we've got um ian said he's happy to sort our decal requirements we'll have to let you know ian because we're going to have to design them as well but uh yeah it's going to be uh 
pretty pretty funky stuff as a couple of bottles and some things now i'm stumped at this actually all these little details what is this i don't know what that is i don't know what that's to that piece i don't know i reckon that's flashing in there yeah but it's a it's, it's a cut grill off. of some kind it isn't is it? yeah i'm sure we'll find out now when this come there's there's no instructions where these come is there so no. we're gonna figure this out no so yeah so it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle with no picture we're gonna to have to try and figure out where some of these bits go and the chances are that we'll end up fabricating something only to find there's already a part that's been made for it i'm so, sure but uh we'll 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 trade notes on that what scale is this build i don't know did it have a scale it doesn't have a scale and bill wigger doesn't know what the scale is either but um i'm guessing and you guys can correct me if i'm wrong but i'm guessing it's around 112. does that does that make sense yeah i'm not very good with scale but i think it's around 112. um game chairs can be lifted out of their mounts you can make it removable shane that is an idea and as a matter of fact in the film we did notice that times it was removed you did still have a base in the in in this section of the orca the trouble with that let me just show you this that seat is going just there where you can see the hole the trouble with that is is that in other scenes there's no hole for it at all it's just a completely flat base so uh, it must have either been swapped out or it was just filmed continuity in a different order who knows when i did the lamps i based it off 112 scale there we go that's what jeff says so right, there you go that that makes sense but i mean it's going to be an absolutely brilliant model you you, you haven't seen an orca model like this trust me but uh, this was available through Bill Weiger that you, you saw at Wonderfest. Yeah. I don't think he's advertising it commercially. Is there only <laughs> no, a... <laughs> and I'm glad too, because good luck getting one. <laughs> they, they, they're our nightmare to get hold of. They are pricey as well, just so you know. Each one of these ships was about $1,000, was it, something like that? So, uh, you know, with, with the money that's gone into this already, this is one of these builds that we can't have foul like the diorama <laughs> and it's funny i've gave uh, phil the tour of the workshop today and i've showed him the old man cave where that is but i never showed him the old diorama <laughs> so when we finish this stream tonight i'll show him the planter that i've got in the garden and how that looks now so uh it's cool michael bradley it looks one sixteenth scale to you i mean with measurements i don't know how big the original walker was so uh no but uh without knowing that it's hard to say most boast decks have a cover for the whole receiver the thing is um Kaylin, sorry i can't come um uh i can't highlight the chat tonight i have got the facility to do it but um i'm conscious of what i'm actually seeing on the screen and because i'm normally looking at a camera here i'll put the chat over this side so i can actually read it from the chat on this as a matter of fact what am i doing look look wayne why don't you just do that <laughs> there we go that makes a lot a lot more sense doesn't it so there we go uh craig jackson says the uh the original orca was 42 foot long so one foot six well do the maths for me craig you can figure it out uh you couldn't cope mrs world away what are you saying <laughs> i couldn't cope with the resin stress <laughs> oh. the red uh, well you know when we did the uh the et spaceship this uh, the workshop the old workshop was covered everything was covered in there because when you work with resin have you noticed it turns into like a powder no it does and that and it's not you shouldn't be breathing it either but um when i work with it i try to now use um uh, a vacuum so i hold the vacuum usually between my legs <laughs> and i'm grinding and hoping the dust sucks into the hose very strange if someone walks in and sees it but i have a very reasonable explanation <laughs> But yeah, oh hello Lou, how's it going? We're all, we're all good here tonight, Lou. Oh, why do I keep on like? I'm just gonna minimise this so I can actually highlight the right comments. Hang on a second. Uh, there we go. Hello Lou, how's it going? Phil's here. We're hoping you get on stream. We are a bit earlier tonight, so uh, even though we ran late for the early stream, if that makes any sort of sense at all, uh, and we're discussing the orca, which you've already seen, Lou, because you went to Wonderfest, as you can see here. A lot of work to do, but. Uh, it's it's looking in fact really i think lou was strolling by when i purchased the first one really was yeah and i was just drooling and i i i <laughs> <laughs> now i know the patrons knew that phil was coming i don't know if anyone else knew uh he was coming so <laughs> so poor phil you landed on tuesday you're still awake so if you're on la time it's afternoon for you at the moment yeah but, yeah, yeah but i'm okay oh, oh he's okay that's all good i don't think i will be <laughs> 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 
Uh, Stephen Carrick, still got my shark kit to do, but the resin prices are really expensive, so I'm looking at a different option for it. Are they? I didn't have a clue. I mean, this you 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 ordered this through Bill, and this was actually molded or 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 made by another a third party, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, a guy called uh, Dean um, uh, Dean McMillan, right. and uh, he is a casting professor. That's all he does is casting. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do anything else. So uh, he couldn't help me. He didn't know what scale it was. He didn't know what it was. He goes, I just pour it and send it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that would be the first time you saw this model then? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Um, you saw Richard Dreyfus in person in 2019. I haven't met Richard Dreyfus, I have to say. And the innuendos have begun. He started them, Robert, <laughs> with his vacuum cleaner. It wasn't me this time. <laughs> Wayne, you got full size elf on the shelf. <laughs> you can't say that, Lou. <laughs> it's not December first. <laughs> uh, Wayne, please tell me where you got the C three PO from. Well, that was from Amazon, but I'll tell you now, it's not available anymore. It was actually a toy. It's a red arm, large Segal figure, action figure. When you could buy, it was about thirty nine ninety nine. I think uh, the price is now over a hundred pound. So uh, pretty crazy if you can get hold of it. I remember, Phil, you were a bit gobsmacked, Lou said. Yeah, I was. I was. You, you can see that in the video, Lou. It was funny. Keep watching the video because no matter where he was in the room, he was just like gravitating towards where Yeah, and I think, I think Bill was a little uncomfortable yeah. with it, you know. But I was taking, I took so many photos of it. And uh, and when I found out, he because, well, you know, they're for sale. I said, this one? I'll buy it right now. He goes, no, 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 this one. Uh, <laughs> but I'll give you, I'll sell you a kit. Of course, you know, if, if you can wait six months, maybe more now, yeah. uh, you might be able to get him to give you one. But I, th I think he was a little shell-shocked after this experience because pouring two at the same time was not something he'd ever imagined. If he, if he comes next year, he might not have none this time. <laughs> some things that he can get together quite quickly. Uh, Paranormal Gamer, if you didn't know, the resin, uh, the resin Jaws model started out brilliantly. It petered off towards the middle. And as I said, the less said about the end, the better. So it's um, it, it, the intentions were there, but unless you want an expensive paperweight or a garden ornament, um, it didn't work out quite the way we wanted it to. And that wasn't just mine. That, that was Phil's as well. I mean, mine's got a use. Mine's holding a plant. But I believe your one's hidden somewhere. Yeah, it's, bur it's buried in the yard. It's just, it's just <laughs> embarrassing. Um, what's that, Megan Nico? Monday morning, you had a small accident at work. You had a, sh you had a shot a nail in my thumb with a nail. What? How are you building models if you had a nail through your finger? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mega Nico. Lou's got to be the next guest, Wayne. <laughs> well, we've got to get Lou over here. Well, you know what? I'm going to America next year. So uh, we, we, we'll all meet up and we'll do a live stream from America. I think that will be quite a, uh, a fun one. Uh, amazing to see the heads of the two best builders coming together. Can't wait to see Orca build, Wayne. Are you going to do the Orca broken up like the end of Jaws movie? <laughs> We, well we talked about we that. Talk, if it goes wrong like the resin build then yeah probably we, we're going to be doing that that build um we, we were talking about what scene of jaws we want to do especially because as i said the chair disappears and stuff and i think just after quint's done the um fishing rod it, yeah. the, after that scene it's the infamous uh are you going to need a bigger boat right with it's, the that's chum. the moment yeah. Yeah. i think that's the moment because Oh, well, there's all the blood from the chum bucket. Yeah, which is on the back. Yeah, so we can put our chum buckets wherever we want. That's right. This this kit does come with the chum buckets as well, which means we get to work with blood or blood effects as well. So I think it's going to be that scene as he's just about to say we're going to need a bigger boat. I think that's where we're going to do. Um, uh, uh Richard Draper's character's playing patience with cards. Quince on the top. You know, it's uh, it's going to look good at the moment. This won't have figures, but you know that might be some for the possibility. Well, he's working on them right now. There you go. So. Uh, um, they're incredible, and I don't know if anybody's seen uh, the sculpt of uh, he did of uh, of Quint. It's extraordinary. It's on his website, BillWeger.com. Um, you can see it there. Uh, w i e e g e r, BillWeger.com. You can see it there, yeah. and I think it's on my uh, on my Instagram feed. Um, it's it, it. He is the one of the most accomplished sculptors I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. He is just pure genius. And interestingly enough, um, he did the sculpt for the jaws in the Pegasus kit. That's his sculpt. 
And um, he's done several other sculpts of, of uh, marine life as well. He's just so incredibly talented. His animal sculpts are brilliant as mm -hmm. well. But yeah, check out this site. I think I've showed you some of these before, but I mean, I showed you a small fraction of what's on the uh, on the website. Hi, John. How's it going? Uh, Jacob, I don't know. I haven't picked up my emails today, so uh, I don't know. You're getting uh, customs with the Titanic? Not good. Now, I've heard about the Titanic. I know about the Hachette Metal one, and I know about the Eagle Moss one. And uh, I've had about, God, I've said to you about 100 emails saying, am I doing the hash? I'm going to be doing, this is what I said to the patrons last night. I'm going to be doing the Eagle Moss wooden Titanic on account that I haven't built a wooden ship. As you can see just behind Phil there, I've got the victory there, which I'm, un I'm unable to finish because they don't have the packs. Now, John Russell managed to give me the Sovereign of the Seas, which I wanted to start. Uh, but obviously with a Titanic coming out, it's going to have all the skills of a wooden build model and I get to paint it as well. So I want you to listen really carefully here. I'm going to be building the Eagle Moss Titanic, okay, on the channel. I'm going to be building the Eagle Moss Titanic on the channel. I know about the metal one, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I know about the metal one and I, I, I might be building it. But I'm going to be building the Eagle Moss one on the channel. <laughs> Hopefully that's got me out of uh, um, any storm. Uh, Phil, what state you from? Can't pinpoint the accent. Thinking the Bronx? <laughs> what? Well, I tell people I'm from Georgia, but actually it's all screwed up. I'm from South End on Sea in Essex by way of California. So I came to California when I was 10 years old, and this is what you get. It's completely screwed up. Uh, but when I'm here long enough, I start to lose, you know, I start to pick up a little more. But everybody here thinks I'm, you know, pure and an American. So uh, I'm, I, I don't know where I'm from. I'm a bit of a, a, a runt. The Bronx, I can't believe you said that. See, Robert's Scottish. So, yeah, oh. yeah. Don't, Robert's from Dundee. Well, I got, you know, when I do get insulted, uh, no offense, when people say I'm from Australia. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I had that when I came over from Australia, all the people in school thought I was American. I'm like, no, no, I'm Australian. <laughs> That's very interesting. You never, I would have never have known. <laughs> uh, White Glove Models, Caelan. He's, uh, Caelan, you're in Cat, California as well. Where are you with your Titanic? Um, so uh, I've stopped building it, to be honest with you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm probably on B deck and uh, I had some problems with the electrics. So I'm not going to continue on uh, with the, uh, with this, with this particular kit, to be honest with you, because um, I've got some, I've got some real problems with the wiring. I may uh, build a, just a regular out of the box one, one uh, at some point, but um, I bit off more than I could chew with the electronics and kind of screwed it up. But it's a it's a, it's a it's a behemoth of a model. You used to have it in the background of your videos, and even that it's five and a half feet long. Wow, that's that's crazy. Uh, Mark, would we both think about doing the Jaws model again? You know what? If I don't go near resin again for the rest of my life, it'll be a billion years too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got the vats of resin down there that I haven't used from last time. But the uh... or as, uh, I think Lou once kindly said, you know, most people pour about an inch. <laughs> And, uh, and 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 don't do that, Mark. Mark, we're still having nightmares about it. Trust me. That th you need a, you need more time to pass before asking questions like that. <laughs> Oliver Cromwell, you'd love to build the HG Wells time machine, but can't get one anywhere. Have you ever seen? Yes, there's several versions of it actually. Yeah. Um. Um. And um, I have a one six scale that I was going to build on the channel, but um. And there was supposed to be a lighting kit for it, but I don't think it ever came out. Uh, there are several available, actually. All right, that's cool. There you go, Oliver. And another thing here, um, <laughs> a lot of people want to see Quint Eaton. Are we going to do a scoured shark with the boat? Well, you know what? Uh, Stratus. Stratus strong. Obviously, getting the boat's the main thing, but then I suppose we'll have to think about some sort of diorama afterwards. Yeah, but if you go to BillWeger.com and check out his photos, he actually sculpted George being eaten. And it's it's a massive sculpt. I don't think it's for sale at all, but he did it for himself. I don't know whether he's ever going to make it available, but it is awesome. You should check that out. Uh, Chris Hurst says blood's not going to be a problem with me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be using paint either. <laughs> We're going to have the real deer here. <laughs> um, Ghostbusters Afterlife is good. Bring tissues and wait until the end of the credits. Yes, Fee said that. Uh, we, we were planning to see that today, but you know, uh, uh, we will see it soon. Uh, I Wayne Highfield, how much of the boat do you have to put together? Um, so curiously, the uh, most of the boat is one one piece. That's an uh, and that is a huge, huge 
uh, undertaking. So to get that much uh, built already. So all we've got to do is we've got to build the interior of the of the cabin and we've got to put the roof on it and then put the uh, uh, the crow's nest and mast. And uh, the difficulty with this particular kit is the detail work and the paint. All of these have got to find places. And as I said, we don't know where some of this stuff goes. So we're going to have to find that. Plus, we've, we're going to be watching yours probably a hundred times oh. now. We've got reference photos. We've got hundreds and hundreds of reference photos to actually look for as well. Uh, and it's really funny. When you uh, when you watch the film under these circumstances, the things you notice when you're yeah. really trying to pay attention yeah. to something, the things that appear and disappear on that <laughs> boat in this movie is extraordinary. We're, we're stocking them up. So we, we know we know bits change on the boat. We know that the, the shark cage was in 12 feet of water. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> From doing this build, I, I think we'd be sick and tired of the film after this but uh <laughs> we didn't get bored of it today we were quite engrossed no, today watching great that, so, so that's all good um if you scan the shark you did you can enlarge it to join the boat um you know what the shark size that we've got it wouldn't be too far off this i don't think i don't think uh, so it could, it could be a slightly larger perhaps yeah uh, are you going to be putting radio controlled lights and sound effects on boards and jaws samuel we were talking about that today about the electrics and how we were going to operate them now, if we have remote control, as you know, with the Terminator build and some of the other builds, it's always got to be on for it to activate for the remote sensor. So uh, it's going to drain the batteries. But what we figured is where we're going to have the cabin here, that we've got the doorway here. If we just have a push button in there, it will turn all the lights on. If there's going to be sound, I would have thought that would be part of a diorama rather than I a think so. I, I don't think I'll go sound, but no, but uh, there you go. Um, Oh, hello, uh, John. We've just been talking about you. What put Pompey's turned on their Christmas lights? Well, Merry Christmas, John. <laughs> um, you'll have to watch it on demand, John. And I'll t I've been talking about the Sovereign of the Seas and how uh, I'm, I'm going to be building the Titanic, the wooden model as well. And that's something I think is going to be right up your street, John. So uh, don't tell the wife, but I think you should get it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Don't forget, you have to pick mine up. I'm still interested. So, yeah, yeah, no, definitely, Edward. Thank you for that. Am I going to build the Lego Titanic? Uh, the Lego's not really my thing. Have you have you built any Lego models? Uh, not for years and years and no. years. Although I have to tell you, I was dangerously close to buying it. <laughs> oh, it does look pretty good, but um, uh, I don't know. It's like a, it's like fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollars if you can find it. Yeah, and no, I mean it's hard to get hold of at the moment. It's just come out, sort of thing. Uh, you had an email from Model Space saying that they're about to start sending packs out again. Philip, from Model Space doesn't exist anymore. They they they've actually amalgamated under Diagostini Collectibles, and you will see that branding change as well. I have been to the new site, and they hadn't put all the collections on there. The Victory's not on there still at the moment, anyway. So I'm waiting for that to come on there. As a matter of fact, you really do need to go and drill down into their website hidden features to actually find the victory instructions now because they used to be on there but they're not on there either so uh if you're building the titanic just don't build the iceberg as well and you'll be good to go um funnily enough on the on the backs of the future delorean they never put their magazines online did they no no not i know has anyone got pdfs of the magazines for the delorean some countries did do that you know but uh i i haven't seen them in the uk but uh there you go. The Eagle Moss uh, Titanic does not look great in the pics. And I worry about the quality. Really, John? See, I thought that had more detail than the metal one. So I, I guess it's what we're seeing. But don't forget that there's going to be more of your own flair in the Eagle Moss one to do and the amount of details. Uh, but we'll have to see. Um, Gary, you, package from Colt TV, man, is currently in London. Oh, wow. Gary went for an order some masks for me for the um, shuttle and stuff. Oh. And that, that build with the plane. Right, right. Fantastic. So, uh, that's coming through from uh, Colt TV, man. We're actually talking about Steve today, so uh, uh, it'll be great great to meet him. Uh, <laughs> Lou, you're on form today, aren't you? What did you say? He says, uh, Bronx by way of Gallifrey. <laughs> That's your voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's right about that. <laughs> he always nails it he does he's got he's got yeah. you bang to right he does he does no, 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 there's no there's no pulling the wool over his eyes um i almost completed the hashette version of the titanic about 20 years ago that was the wooden one wasn't it because they did do a wooden one at the time but a lot of people have been pre-ordering the titanic um masterpiece model makes a time machine and i've got one on the bench really lou is that going to be on your channel soon what are you, what are you, what's Bill Blue building at the moment? Do you know? He, he's finishing the, the Com, uh, Comlock and Stone. That's right. And yep. then um, 
uh, he had, uh, I saw he had a ma uh, the Mandalorian's, uh, the Razor was on the back. Razor Crest, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, that, is, that a, is that a Bandai kit? No, it's the Razor Crest, a Bandai kit. Because he had that on the badge. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be talking about Ghostbusters Afterlife because there's the risk of having spoilers in chat, which I, I don't want. We, we can't have that. Um, uh, the film came out today in the UK, Roadrunner, just so you know. Uh, I hope... I, I hope so, Sophie. The, the 2016, but I don't think I know anyone who likes the 2016 Ghostbuster. Have you oh. seen that? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not a cup of tea. Missed. Hi, Wayne from Louisiana. Hello, Joseph. How's it going? Um, running out of years, Wayne. Not finished the victory yet. Ah, oh, John, come on. <laughs> um, uh, uh, John, you, you came up in conversation quite a lot today because when I met you, if you remember, we were talking about the masts that you've done for the victory. And... Uh, we're going to have to probably fabricate our own mask for this because even though the mask comes in resin, I think we can probably do a lot better. Plus, uh, yeah. Phil's had this great idea about putting nails through the through the actual mast so we can make the step rails. We can't really do that with resin. Uh, without drilling holes, I think it would be a lot harder and no. it, it wouldn't look right. So. No. so we are going to have to fabricate pretty much like what you've done with the Victory. It's looking lovely though, uh, John. Uh, fan home is shipping in the USA again. That's excellent news, Chris. Hopefully things will come back to normal. And Trevor's workbench, afternoon from Oregon, Wayne and Phil. There we go. That's one of your... Oh, very good. <laughs> well, whereabouts in Oregon? Wait, well, yep. Um, Trevor, whereabouts in Oregon are you? Um, you love Lego and make your own things like a floor stand for my Aragorn Lord of the Rings sword. <clears throat> I've got Andoral str uh, Stratus upstairs in my, uh, just outside my man cave. Uh, Berg, this is going to be in London tomorrow. Hello, Berg, this... Oh, wait, uh, why not go for the Trumpeter Titanic? Well, John Builds Iconic Military Models is doing that, and that's the one you were building, was it, Trumpeter? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, John's looking stunning already. He's, he's actually putting the metal plates on the outside, so the hole's going to be completely different to what you actually see now. Um, it's it's not something I'm going to do. We've, now I'm doing the Orca, obviously, that's going to be a, a, a lot of time going to go into this. I've got no doubt. I mean, this isn't going to be like the Jaws build. It's not going to be something that's going to be completed. Does uh, Does John Russell know about Nigel's modeling bench? I don't know. John, Nigel's modeling bench. Do you know about that? Why is that? <laughs> because he has the one two hundred trumpeter. Right. And I think I was telling you he tore apart the hull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just completely decimated it and rebuilt it because he said it was the wrong shape. <laughs> That's how they started with the photo edge. They, mm -hmm. It was originally c c created for, for Nigel, so he could put his uh, hull back. Wow. He's, he's a talented builder. It does look good, I have to say. Uh, yes, it's a Bandai kit. Thank you, Lou. That's excellent. Uh, just picked up the Mando figure to go with the Razor Crest. Wow. You must have a lot queued up, Lou. How many models have you got queued up at the moment? <laughs> um... The two everyone slated the 2016 Ghostbusters. <laughs> it's a sword intended to be Andoral or Narsil. I don't know, but my my sword is the Andoral, but mine's a bit of a special one because before they released the Andoral sword, they did a limited edition one. I've got the limited edition one. I think it's out of five thousand. I think they made. Um, mine's limited. It's it's on the wall. As a matter of fact, I had a problem once, and I can't remember what the problem was, but I had some police officers around here. And the, the guy saw the sword, and I thought, oh, God, I'm going to get in trouble for this. He's got a sword on the wall. And he says, you know what? There's only I've only ever seen one other one of these uh, in Northampton, and apparently he owned it. So, uh, so, so I was like, thank God for that. I thought I was getting arrested. I've got the katana from Kill Bill just behind that printer there. So it's uh, <laughs> we can't be, can't be getting in trouble for that. I think, it's, I think it's legal to own them. You just can't buy them. Uh, you know what, Scott Mitchell, we were talking about this today. What's your thoughts on Star Trek Discovery being pulled from Netflix two days before season four is released? We now have to wait till next year for Paramount Plus to start streaming in the UK. Yeah. Now, Phil said that Paramount is, is actually it's on now. Yeah. So in America, it is it's, available they're, now. They're streaming it now. They are streaming it now. That That's surely going to increase piracy, I think, if people can't see it and the others are. Yeah. So I it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's a crazy state of affairs. But, but what surprises me more about that, that two days notice because i'm guessing that they had the adverts lined up ready to say this is coming so so and it got pulled i don't know what the story behind it is i don't actually watch discovery scott to be honest with you but i can understand if you do like that show how it can be uh annoying but it is what it is it is what it is um
then don't rob your house. Star Trek Discovery is awful. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> you like the T-shirt. Is that what I'm wearing today? You trained at Bletchley Park as an air traffic engineer in 1989. Spenny, have you ever been to Bletchley Park? No, I want to. Oh, it's an amazing place to go to. We, yeah. went, we went there just before lockdown. It was in March, just before lockdown last year. And what we didn't realise there, because obviously we had just watched Imitation Game with um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. So we knew all about how the Enigma code was solved and, you know, how they, they cracked the code. But what they don't tell you is on the base, no one knew what other people were doing. And they do tell us on the tours that occasionally you'll see people come into Bletchley Park saying they used to work here. And they worked here at the same time as other people, but didn't know what they did is fascinating so, yeah so yeah because the secrets uh, i mean if you've been to bletchley park they're saying you know loose lips sink ships and stuff like that no one talked it was really really strong secrets coming in there but it's an amazing place to visit if you haven't been to bletchley park and they've got a uh a computer history museum near it as well where you can see the first um what's it called goliath i think the first uh oh, yeah PC basic, size of a house the thing is but that's that's worth a visit as well um same as NCIS was on Fox, now Disney owns. So new season will be on Disney Plus next year, although 10 episodes already in the US. You, you, you are finding that it's starting to branch out. You've got your Netflix, your Amazon, Apple TV, uh, Peacock, which now I believe is on, um, uh, it's just joined one of them. Uh, I think it's just on Sky now, Peacock. With, with Hulu. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And it, it seems like you're getting all, we're either going to get saturated by streaming services or, which I think someone should do, is make an umbrella where you can get like five channels in that package. I don't know. Yeah, but I think. See, I worry. This is going to be like the 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 the, the evolution of the of the DVD yeah. because at a certain point, um, there's no way they're going to be able to get all of the consumers. Yeah. To to sign up for all those apps that is that everybody's not going to do it they're going to no. pick one and go through it so i think there's going to be mergers and that, that's what i mean there has to be because yeah you, 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 there, yeah there will be too much in the market yeah right? but i mean i've seen it more now with announcements like uh you just said about netflix and star trek discovery and the paramount plus with short notice like that i it, it's get your skates on i think <laughs> uh too many streaming services exactly yeah. i thought exactly anthony yeah um you both worked at Bletchley. Wow. You can't afford all the streaming services. Well, well myself, uh, Roadrunner, I've got I, I've got Sky. So I've got all the things on Sky. I've got Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, uh, BritBox, because I like watching all my Brit, the old Grain Chills. Remember Grain Chill? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're all on BritBox. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all I've got. Oh, Apple TV. And I've got Apple TV. I've only got that, though, from a new phone because uh, they give you three months free. So, And I think the only show I've watched on Apple TV is The Morning Show. I haven't really watched anything else. Although Tom Cruise has got a film on there. Uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Hanks has got a film on there. Finch or something? Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that, but uh, I couldn't even tell you what it is. I know it's about a dystopian future, though, apparently, the uh, synopsis of it. Uh, <laughs> Andy is how many kits are you currently making that you get monthly delivery of parts? Well, aside from the victory, <laughs> the orca... The space shuttle, everything else I get monthly parts for. <laughs> we are coming to the end of some builds. We've got the Bismarck, which is up there at the moment. There's only eight more stages left of that to go. Um, the Agora models, let me think. Uh, the Zero Fighter is probably the next one to finish on that. And that's up to box seven. So eight, nine, ten. We've got five boxes of that left to go. Uh, but next year, they're, they're all coming to an end. And then you don't know what's being released. Obviously, we've got the Titanic, which is going to replace some of them. Um, but we'll have to see. You'd love to visit the UK because that's where the War of the Worlds is set. We'd love to see the tripod in Woking. Is there a tripod in Woking? Did you wear that? I wasn't aware of that. No. Unless you're talking about the actual War of the Worlds, uh, uh, Jeff Wayne, where they're in Woking, where they attacked. I'm guessing that's what you mean. But I don't know if Woking's actually got a, uh, a mem memorabilia of it there. Uh, Lou Damas, it's all coming back round to what cable TV was at the beginning. Yeah, he's right. Wow. So is America no different then? You've got the loads no, of streaming it's, services. It's saturated. Yeah. Right. It, and and the, the other problem is, I mean, we watched the other night, we, we decided to watch uh, No Time to Die yeah. on, on Amazon. Uh -huh. um, and what they're doing is, is they're cross-promoting uh, box sets of shows from their channels that they're letting you buy on demand through Amazon. 
So it's like, well, <laughs> what what is that? Oh, well, if you come over here and you pay for a subscription on, say, Paramount Plus or yeah. or whatever, or CBS or whatever, you you don't need to get it on Amazon. We'll give it to you for free. It's like, oh, you're not getting it for free. I'm paying fifteen dollars a month or whatever it is. So it's just gotten wacky. That that's crazy. Uh, Chris Hurst says Finch is brilliant. It's a futuristic version of Castaway. Really? Huh? Wow, I, I enjoy Castaway. That was a great film. It was. I didn't like the time jump in it. No, that's I was weird. Re I was really enjoying his time on the island, and then it time jumped, and I was like, oh, okay. Then the, yeah. uh, And the shameless uh, promotion of UPS. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It's FedEx, wasn't it? Oh, right. FedEx, FedEx. Yeah, FedEx. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> FedEx is a great company, unless you have to get, you get stung with custom charges, and then, oh. <laughs> There's a shark in a roof in Oxford. Is there? Chris, I've seen one in a massive shopping centre. I think there was one at the um, uh, the Meadow Centre in, um, is it the Meadow Centre? Medenhall in Sheffield, Ray? But uh, you have to send me a picture, Chris. I've got a funny feeling I've seen that picture, though. <laughs> As a family, we're paying over £200 per month just on TV. There are far too many streaming platforms. You say not everyone will sign up. You know what, Scott? If you're in the UK, remember, you're paying a £150 TV licence a year as well. Which, you know... If you're watching things on demand, you don't have to pay. But, you know, if you're watching live football on YouTube, you have to pay for a TV license. So uh, you've got to add that cost in there as well. Uh, Spenny, you've had the COVID and flu jab today. Oh, well done. I'm, I'm all, I'm all, and you are, we're all, we're all vaccined up. So, yep. you know, <clears throat> love the T-shirt, Wayne. I've, I've had this one for a while. You know what? Phil's, Phil's bought me a T-shirt, a Sprueverse T-shirt today. So you'll be, you'll be seeing that on the channel soon. <laughs> I'll have to return the favour and get some World of Wayne merchandise. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you check out uh, bit.ly forward slash Wayne store, I've, I've started updating the merchandise in there. I've had to do it because if you didn't know, I lost all of my YouTube assets on the channel. So even all the merchandise artwork completely went. So I've had to start from scratch. Uh, well, my last equal build, I'm wearing Let's Get Cracking. I, I, I've seen, <laughs> we had your merch on the map. Oh, yeah, did you? <laughs> Messi, you're five miles from Woking, then there is a tripod there. Really? God. See, the only time we would have gone through Woking, you would have as well, was when you went to Portsmouth. Right. The, the train stops there. Other than that, I've, ne I've never been to Woking. Right. What an so. obscure thing. I wonder why it's there. Is that, I, I, I think that's where it was based. That's where the attack on London was. Oh, the, the yeah, oh, in, in got, Woking, it, got it, got yeah. it, got it. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> Netflix was offered no time to die, but didn't want to pay the £400 million they wanted. It's a lot of money. Um... Uh, Revel is coming out with a Razor Crest. Really? So different model companies are making it. Again, that gets that trick. I don't know which one to buy. Because you see that with quite a few models, don't you? That different, different models are being made by different people. Yeah. You're, you're a bit confused which one to buy. Yeah. Then. It depends on the license, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, do you have the Disney Channel? As the man, I do have the Disney Channel. But to be honest with you, you'd see Disney Channel uh, amalgamated with Star. I think it was. So you, you get to watch your uh, 24, Keith Sutherland's 24 and stuff on there. That's all I, I really watch on there. But like Mrs. World of Wayne, she loves anything to do with murder mysteries. So, you know, that's why I hide out in the workshop most of the time because she's so clued up on, on things like that. I do worry for my life sometimes. <laughs> uh, yes, it's in a side street in Headington on the way from the A40 into the city. David, I really wasn't aware of that. They need to advertise that more and get some tourism to Woking. How is your build the space shuttle? Well, look, it's up there. That's all I've got away. Oh, was my head in the way. There. Now, I'm about an eighth of the way of putting decals on it. I've still got painting to do a bit. And then I've got to weather the whole thing up. It's looking great. So, yeah. I have to honestly say, and that's a number. I mean, I'm not just saying it. It looks awesome. That's the first model I've done since, like, I was a kid, though. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> so, we're getting there. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Phil, you're building the Enterprise. Yes. We uh, we, we had a look at my Enterprise today, and we, I was showing him how the panels are fitting together and how the light bleed is in it. Now, my advice, if you are building the Enterprise, is to deal with the light bleed for each panel at a time as you get it. Because for me to deal with mine, I'm going to have to take the whole thing apart. Um, and there's not really any way to fit, fit it. With the plates, I mean, the, the, they're actually set in a place on the frame that you can put the plates. So there's no maneuverability of where those plates are going to go. So the only thing that can be stopping the imbalance is either a pinch from the wires underneath or as you'll notice when you're building the Enterprise that the actual frames are right over the top of where they put the LEDs. So um, it, it's a pain, Robert, I have to say. But uh, 
everyone's got other solutions. There is a user out there, and if you look on the Facebook forums, you'll see that he ripped all of the lights out and replaced everything with a single uh, strip RGB light. But he still had problems with light bleed and panels not fitting properly. So, uh, Interesting. yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, White Glove Models, there was a massive orca killer whale uh, built to try and keep sea lions away from the Ballard Locks in Washington State. It fouled on a bar board it and has, it's been hanging from the ceiling. Really? Oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> um, Google now have a platform when you can watch every platform on. What? What's that, James? That That's confused me. Star is all Fox movies and TV. Ah, right, okay. But they they because that wasn't originally on Disney Plus. That's on Disney Plus now. Because well, Disney bought Fox. When was that? Was that? Uh, it was um it finished uh last year. Oh right, so it's quite a, yeah recent. Yeah, they, they bought Fox. Wow. <laughs> uh, they have a HD World Center there as well. You know what? You, you, you're selling. Uh, Messi, are you from the Woking Tourist Board? Because <laughs> you're selling it to me. <laughs> Come to Woking. <laughs> uh, hello, Wayne. Me and Tim Man are huge fans. Give me a shout out for Stephen Rowe. Oh, hello. Uh, well, where where did you go? Hello, Starsh Starsh IPXO. XO. No, so it's, oh Starship. I've just noticed it. Sorry, I'm looking at the. Uh, I'm blind tonight. <laughs> Starship. No problems. And hello, Stephen Rowe. Uh, fun fact, both H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds and Bram Stoker's Dracula were first published in 1897 and within weeks of each other. They're 124 years old. Extraordinary. See, you come from the models, you get, you go home with lots of facts. <laughs> um, the frame of the Enterprise could be misshapen. Um, Joseph, again, me and Phil talked about this, that it doesn't matter what the frame... If, if you look at the frame when you've got the panels in, you will see it's warped anyway, because that's what happens when you put the panels in. When you put the bottom cage on, it's going to pull all of that together. So if there is any warpage, it's going to come out when you put the bottom panel in. And I think that's what Eagle must have counted on to lose some of the light bleed. But there's some there's some plates in there which you're just not going to get flat because the LEDs are sitting right underneath the frame. I, I was know. surprised how heavy it is. It is. Just it like, is really heavy. The, the, which was a, an issue that I think if anyone went to Destination Star Trek were noticing that people were picking up at both ends and they didn't have it on a stand. Now, Eagle Moss did explain that away that obviously it's a prototype model and it's been around for a while. So, you know, they just wanted to be careful with it. But I do worry about how the stand is supporting the ship. I think it needs something resting under the saucer section as well as on the base section as well. Because I can't see a single stand holding that weight. Well, it is heavy and that, that's just one side. That's crazy. Uh, Wayne, is a product called Liquid Electrical Tape available in the UK? Yes, Raymond, I've got it behind me on that station there. It's a yellow, uh, the yellow thing next to the uh, toothpick. Uh, yeah, that's the one. This was from Amazon. There you go. It looks like that. It really smells. It really does smell. It's really potent. As a matter of fact, if you've got lacquers and lacquer paints, it's worse than that. So if you're going to use it, use it in a really well ventilated room. Now there is, I don't know if it's available on Amazon in the UK, but there is a liquid tape in a yellow tube. Like it looks like a, a little toothpaste tube. And um, it's it's great because you can uh, just put a little drop out on a uh, on something and put it put it in your, on your model or whatever or dip your uh, wires in it or whatever you want to do with it you get a lot more control i don't know if a brush comes with this one does it way uh it does yeah As a matter of fact, let me show you this it's uh it's quite a gloopy little mess so the brush is inside there. right yeah so um if you can find the one in the tube i think you're going to be a lot better off than than that can you smell that now oh wow. you know what i mean and that's just totally now it's, it's really potent yeah fun. so uh there you go. Can, you, can you open that again? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're, we're behind the client. <laughs> we're seeing pink bump bubbles on the screen and there's, there's, there's nothing here. Trust me. It's not special effects. It's just me and Phil dripping. <laughs> uh, why can't we just scrap the light and replace it with Ralph's boards in it and treat the Enterprise like a plastic kit and treat the light bleed? Uh, James, you know what? For the amount of times, again, we spoke to this lady, for the amount of times I'm probably going to have the model um, lit up, I don't think it's worth it. I do like the, I wanted the model to be something static. Pretty much like the Millennium Vulcan here. I can light the Millennium Vulcan up, but I don't think I ever have. I've changed the batches because I don't want them leaking in there. But, uh, you know, it's nice to say, look, here's the ramp going down and here's the lights coming on the front. But um, 
I don't know. It, it is what it is at the moment, and I just wanted. It's going to be. It's an extraordinary piece of art. It's yeah. going to be beautiful. It, it, it's going to. Yeah, it's going to be a lovely model, regardless of whether the lights light up or not. But the uh, there it is. But unlike other people, they. I've heard a lot of people don't like that plate effect, but if you're building a ship, it's going to be built by plates. So I actually like those lines in it. It's not going to be completely smooth. No, right? and it doesn't bother you. It, it yeah. disappears. Uh, yeah. It's got a terrific paint job on it. Uh, Craig Jackson, you've got your Enterprise Saucer next to me right now. It's a really complete. It's fair old heft. It is a bit of a weight. Now, I'm on stage 13 now. So uh, um, there's a long way to go. But I know a lot of people are up to issue 15, I think. I've got the instructions for issue 16 here, which is basically the bottom section that they're starting to create. I don't know when I'm getting that. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Lou, two guys huffing fumes in the shed. Nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't plan these streams. This is what just happens, you know. Well, we've only been in here for like 55 minutes and we're already up to mischief. It's not good. <laughs> don't forget to shake before use. That'd be even more potent, James. You can't be doing that. Changing all those batteries in the Enterprise D would be a nightmare. Yeah, you're telling me it's going to be. Where Where is that housing? The batteries. Yeah. Well, you've got in the... Um, you saw how I plugged that into yeah, the... Yeah. I, we don't know how that's going to get mounted yet. They haven't told us that. But in the nasals, they use cell batteries. So each nasal is going to have two cell batteries in each one with a switch. So if we want to change it, we've got to... There is access to it, but we've got to take... If we, if we want to turn the nasals on, we've got to flick two switches. Are you serious? No. So there's not one continuous... No, no, it's all remote control. It's not remote control either. So if you want to turn everything on, that bridge one, you, the, the cobra neck, you have to flick that switch. The source section, you'll have to flick that switch. Uh, the nasals, you have to flick I that switch. I had no idea. Yeah, so that's that's how it is. So they didn't create a, a like they did here with an umbilical version no. that you could just override it. And... No. <laughs> so there we go. Uh Anyway, how much is the London Transport bus costing to build, if you don't mind me asking? I'm toying with the idea of building it. I think it's $49.99 if you want it over 24 months, and I think it's $99.99 over 12 months. So, uh, But all the details for that are on the Angora Models website. I've just quoted you the price in UK there. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the prices are going to be different in other countries. Um, you'll have to check out with Agora Models on that one. The detail on that is extraordinary. The, the bus, I mean, I've been wanting to do that since Hatchet released it, and yeah. I missed the boat on it. Like it, it by, it's like. beautiful. But, but being able to do that is absolutely excellent. Um, yeah, Lou, you're, you're on form tonight, as you can see. What's he saying now? <laughs> Nothing, everyone's like laughing at Lou's. Uh, <laughs> so we, no, we're, well. getting, we're getting high as kites in the uh... <laughs> <laughs> You can't let your wife watch this stream because she's going to think that I'm... <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's too late. I'm sure <laughs> yeah, sure. I can't get you into trouble. I've got to take care of you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you build a full-size R2-D2? Adrian, you know, I had the option to do that. And if you want to speak to someone about building a full-size R2-D2, I don't know if he visits the channel much anymore, but Mark Tadjall, he's a member of the R2-D2 UK Builders Club. And they tour the country at different conventions and events. Um, there's loads of people there that do that. Sfi is another one that was in the process of building an R2-D2. Uh, but his full-size one is 3D printed. So you can imagine how much filament that took. But uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> this is rolled away. Ian saying that Mrs. Wedaway needs to come and open the workshop door. <laughs> it, it was only off for a second. I did tell you that it was posted and stuff. So. <laughs> um, Rootmaster only ships from UK and US only, so mind the import taxes. I wasn't aware of that, Pete, I have to say. Is that not available over um, in Europe then? Because normally I thought Agora would do it elsewhere. The only thing that I could think that when they don't is that if Hachette plans to release it in a country that you're in, I don't know. Hello, Bruce Gunny121. How's the doll's house going? Um, it's it's stalled at the moment, Gunny, because we're we're in the process of having our car, uh, carpet relayed in the lounge. So I'm having to move everything out the lounge, including the TV where the Enterprise should be above, and the doll's house. So uh, at the moment, nothing's happening yet. Um, how much does the Ecto One weigh? A lot, Joseph. I haven't weighed it. It's a lot. It's a big old model. As a matter of fact, it's probably one of the biggest models in here. Isn't it's it? ridiculous. It's massive. It is. It's a big old it, thing. It's massive. And for metal wise, it's it's full up to the brim. I'll um, tell you though, for a scale uh, for a scale movie model, I mean, you could film that and you wouldn't know it was a model. No, nah, no, nah, definitely. Uh, Lou, <laughs> a a life size R two is a growl project for me. Really. That'd be a great thing to build, uh, Lou. Out of metal. 
There's there's guys who are building them in the states. Yeah, they're bloody expensive. No, they are. I've seen oh, the prices of them. I mean, uh, I was watching a guy build one. Um, I don't know if he's he's uh, actually uh, posting anymore on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But the, the the groups that have come up with all the servos. Yeah. And the and the electrics and and how it all works and, and it's an engineering marvel. I've, I've seen them in this country. Apparently, they've been using some of the fan built droids on the sets of Mandalorian and stuff because it's cheaper to actually get the fan. Oh no! Uh, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. I mean. Uh, some of this stuff now is better i mean they it, why rebuild it from start when yeah. you've got all this amazing stuff out there uh Burgess, you got your first pack of the 917 uh put uh phil saw that today including the engine down yeah. there. that's amazing ixo collection to tell you he saw the peugeot 205 as well uh amazing models um dave say did a live build of pack one stage one of gore models root master this is the fourth root master look on youtube you know what i watched dave say's original one with hash it and that's what got me into it, David Bassett. The trouble is that he was far too far along for me to actually join up and join that one. So I did miss out. There we go. Look, John Patterson, uh, Germany have the bus as well. That's excellent. I have a question. Uh, how long does the news agent keep, keep a, uh, an installment of something before it's gone? They, what will happen is they'll, if they release a pack, like a, a new build, they'll normally get the first four issues in that people can just buy off the shelf. Then you need to subscribe to it. If you don't, they will no longer start that part. Uh, Some sometimes, if it's a big news agent, they'll probably keep one or two, and then if it's still getting returned, then they'll just cut orders out for that. If you've got a subscription, because my Spitfire is on subscription at the news agents, then they'll keep it for you as long as you want them to. Oh, I see. You do have to pay a deposit of that though, which right, is like right. free free issues in advance. Right. So they don't build up and they lose out money for it. So. Yeah, it makes sense. But. Uh, it's a good way to get hold of them. And the good thing is, if it's about six weeks down the line and you find you've got a part missing, they yeah. can still get hold of them. Oh, that's good. Because in their main warehouse, yeah. unlike the Eagle Moss Company, they still they keep still that, have them, like, yeah. stocks of it. So uh, There we go. The Rootmaster bus is going to weigh 14 kilograms when complete. The outer skin is metal too. Oh, my God. Uh, Tommy's, I'm not building the Robocop because it's not available in the country at the moment. Evelyn, the, com the comment above you, um, in France, they've got it there. But the Nexus, Kevin uh, is building it over on the Nexus channel. So uh, will it come to the UK? Who knows? I don't know what uh, Hashit's plans are. But uh, we'll have to see. What about the Hogwarts Express? Wait, are it they... never happened. We did the trial, I think it was last year. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and uh, it never happened. Why? But the Eddie Stobart truck did. Yeah, I know. But, but I mean, that's Eddie Stobart's UK. It's not, you haven't got Eddie Stobart in America. No, 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 I didn't know. No, 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 no. So it's not, it's a limited appeal. I don't understand the logic sometimes with some of these releases, but who knows? Um, ben in, from Eagle Moss said in an interview that one of the original uh, SFX guys said that they could have filmed that model. Really? What, with the switches on it? <laughs> Is that, are we talking about the Ecto-1? Sorry, Bird, this are we talking about the Enterprise. Uh, oh, look, Andrew Fern from your old neck of the woods, from Grey's. Hello, Andrew, how's it going? That's uh, Esther's old breeding, uh, Mrs. Rhoda Wayne's old breeding ground. She was, uh, she lived in Grey's for a little while. I, I, I know Grey's very well in Lakeside Shopping Centre. <laughs> uh, are you building the Route Master, Pete? Ah, excellent. It's a great build, don't you think, Pete? I, I really am happy with it. I'm so eager to get the next pack. I can't wait. Uh, the first four issues are attractor issues. Nice large bits of painted bodywork, leather seats, etc. Uh, these are on sale and return, so the new days won't lose out on getting them. So that's to draw you in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> All right, Wayne and Sprue. Your name is Sprue now. <laughs> um, need to know what colour of yellow did you use on the Enterprise D? Well, on my one... I used um trying to find it that model air it's it's the one on the fourth shelf down the one that's out of place fourth shelf down from the top oh, I see. and you see it it's model air which is in the wrong place I don't know what color that one is I use this which is medium yellow and it's seven seventy one zero zero two now I've got the most useless piece of equipment that I just love um it came from China and it's a it's it's a bottle mixer paint mixer it looks uh, it, it, it's about yay big and it looks like a little volcano and when you put the you you push down on the top of it and it vibrates and it spins and you can do it upside down it cost me i'm embarrassed to say but i'm gonna tell because you know all, all 65 dollars oh my god but can i tell you something it's fantastic <laughs> lou you need to get one <laughs> 
They're great for mixing. He's rolling his eyes. He's rolling his eyes because he's, eyes. he's heard you bought a machine that shakes yeah. and vibrates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... And then he's saying, why did you just shake the yeah. vibe? <laughs> <laughs> the Rootmaster bus weight is 32 kilograms. What's the consensus on that? 32 kilograms. That's, a, that's how much my uh, jaws diorama, my uh, resin weighed. Just slightly more than that. I think yours probably weigh more because you, your one seems to be a big bigger. Yeah, much bigger. Yeah, oh, my God. Hello, brother. How's Hello. it going? We've been talking about you today as well over in Ottawa. See, we're hoping to come and see my brother in What's July. It? So uh, bless you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Michael, yeah. He, he, definitely come down to uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> if, oh, Mrs. World Wayne will be watching that. No. OK, we're not going to Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting she's right. Yeah, we're in the workshop tonight. <laughs> um, Better grab your sleep. Yeah, I think I will. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Wayne, how are you? I'm still building the Back to the Future car. Well, Phil's been building the back. You've had some missing issues, haven't you? Son? Yeah, I did. Well, um, I have the full kit, but the magazines for 53 through 63 never came with it. And parts of magazine uh, 87 and 88 are missing as well. So if anyone's got them, then that's, that's one option. But if anyone does have the PDFs of those magazines, that could be really appreciative so we can actually work through it. Otherwise... You'll have to work through World of Wayne's videos. Yeah. Because really. the instructions are on there. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah. they? Oh, of course. Yeah. I'll do that then. That's a great idea. Lou's rolling his eyes. Yeah, yeah I know. Was, I... Was... <laughs> oh, look, we got the family in tonight. Hello, mother. How's it going? <laughs> How are you today? Um, Agora is distributing Hashit's Bismarck. Think they would do the same for the Metal Titanic uh, as it was releasing. I... I Brad, the only people that can ask that are Agora. So I, I wouldn't have a clue, to be honest with you. Um, Michael is not allowed anywhere near LA. <laughs> there we go. Um, no, this is one of the Yeah, 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 yeah I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, Raymond Clark, is there an Apollo moon lander kit? There was. It's on the channel a couple of years ago. Diagostini did a trial. Um, but again, four issues. I think it was a six issue trial, actually. It never went ahead. And I think that would have quite a big market. Yeah. The, um, yeah, I love all that Apollo stuff. There's some pretty cool uh, uh, kits out there. I know uh, Ravel's got one. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I love that stuff. The, th the thing is, because I knew it was a trial after issue six, when I knew it weren't coming out, I actually just got rid of it. Yeah, it had the diorama of the moon as well. So you yeah, I, I, yeah, I wish Mobius would, would pick up that license. Yeah. They could do a great job with it. Uh, hi, Phil. Welcome to England. <laughs> Thank you. Good to be home. Uh, what happens in the workshop stays in the workshop. Is that what it is now? <laughs> I, perhaps I should get a plaque for that made for the door as well. <laughs> uh, do you think the source section could be displayed on fishing wire or is it too heavy? Um, Scott, anything can be displayed on fishing wire. The, the Millennium Falcon was held up on five strings of 32 pound fishing wire. So, you know, it, it can hold it. Whether you want to or not, and if your ceiling can hold it, it needs to go into your joist. You can't just stick it in drywall, otherwise you'll uh, you'll pull your ceiling down. But uh, there you go. Do you know if Agora are going to do the Spitfire again, Gavin? I, I don't. I, I don't. I haven't got a clue. There is a whole Apollo. Who who makes that kit, Chris? It's not a part work, because the one I was on about from Diego Cine was a part work kit. It is on the channel. I did do a playlist for it. Do you know there is a Japanese now that I think about it, there's a Japanese company that has a pre-built uh Apollo uh satin five rocket. Wow. In stages. It's all metal, it's all pre-painted, it's all finished. It comes in a gorgeous box and you just kind of stack it. Wow. Um I do know that, that uh that came out several years ago, but I think that was a collector's. I don't know how many they made, but that was extraordinary. Wow um lego saturn 5 with 1969 pieces a coincidence and an apollo landed <laughs> perhaps um uh, but everyone's talking about the lego apollo moon land i haven't seen it uh life and times of mulch you're having the nightmare with wires on the delorean any advice um life of times of mulch the biggest advice i can give is in issue 91 you're going to be sandwiching both of the vehicles to get both of the top side of the vehicle and the bottom side of the vehicle together you have to have the actual top frame on its side while you connect all the wires up if i was you i would use heat shrink connect the wires up and then put the heat shrink over the plugs so they don't come out so if you do risk pulling the wires you're not going to put the whole thing together only to find out a plug's come out and you're going to have to take it apart again if you watch my issue 91, there's a reason I'm crying at the end. 
I make these mistakes so you don't have to. Oh. <laughs> Are those plugs not very uh, they tight? They come out because it, there's no give room in that. When you lift it up off the side to put it on, you, you pull it out. And no, it, that's good to know. But with heat shrink on it, it can't do that. Got right? it. So, uh, yeah, that, that will make you scream. Issue 91. If, 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 I don't know if you got to issue 48 yet. I'm on 53. Oh, so you've done the wires. and the... Oh, everything's in. Oh, right. My God, because the wires where you have to trade them through those little bit of plastic at the front. And yeah, the... yeah. I've done all of that. Oh. And, uh, that actually was quite therapeutic. Really? You I enjoyed that? that. I really did enjoy it. <laughs> that's, that, that's got a reputation. That, that issue in 91 oh. has got the reputation. No, that thing. didn't. But that... if you got through that, you're going to have a breeze. Oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Proctor Wayne, the Peugeot 205 model looks great. Speaking of old Peugeot hashes, I still you still got one. Oh my god! Oh, you got the 306. Oh bless! Uh, I sent you a pic of Kylie's Lego. Is Kylie up to one? I didn't know she does that sort of thing. I wonder if there anyone's going to bring out the part work of the Batmobile from Batman, the Batman. Part work of the Batmobile from the Batman. Are you talking about the new film, Gary? I don't even know when that comes out. I don't think it's got enough awareness until the film comes out. Is that Phil who did the 1996 Doctor Who TV movie? It is. This is the very person, yes. <laughs> um, uh, did I see somebody mention the Lego Saturn V and Lunar Land? I love them sets. We've been talking about it, Sonderax, yeah. Uh, the International Space Station as well. Also the White House too. What, as a model? They're, they're, they exist as really? plastic kits. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, take off the side. Oh, that's the other good one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Craig, well done for that. That's an absolutely brilliant one. Uh, take off your, your wing mirrors on your DeLorean off the doors. Really? The amount of times it's got to be on its side, you're going to snap them off. Mine both fell off, so they're all glued on. Okay, so, got yeah, it. Yeah, take them off. <laughs> uh, Svee, you've been waiting for issue 91 for three months. Of the Del that's crazy, Svee. Absolutely crazy. Do you have weird customer service here for them? Eagle yeah. Moss. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, we they 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 feed back on Facebook. There's a guy called Brett Coles, I think that's his name, and he feeds back where what deliveries are delayed, what's coming, and all that. But uh, we don't get the problem that you believe you have in the US that if there's like a T-shirt special edition missing, right? They just won't send anything out to you, R right? Here we get IOUs. Uh, I, I just got one for the Eleanor build saying I would appreciate an I at that in the keep yeah. going. It's so they're now trying to uh, communicate with me via email. Okay. and it's it's like some robot it's kind of weird yeah I, I, it's the same everywhere at the moment with the service there but uh you know what i do the best thing to do is put it aside and the universe will take care of everything yeah. else because miraculously <laughs> it will show up one day and there's plenty of other models to build while you're waiting <laughs> and, if, and if, if, if anyone gets the re the reference basically uh we'll, we'll just go down the winchester have a blind and make sure wait for all this to blow over <laughs> <laughs> Uh, having trouble finding a full list of your merch, Wayne. Andrew Fern, it's bits.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Wayne store. Just type that in and that will take you straight to the straight, straight to As a matter of fact, look, I'll put it in the uh, chat for you. Uh, is that right? Yeah, that looks right. There we go. It's in, it's in chat for you. I hope that uh, there will be some figures for the new Marvel movie. Did you enjoy Venom 2? I don't know if I told you that my nephew that Charlotte was talking about yeah. today, he's um, he's at Cambridge University. Yeah, yeah. He was in Venom 2 as like an extra. Very but cool. we were trying to figure out where he was because he's in the party scene when Venom sort of splits up. So um, I never saw it. Was it you was... never saw it? Well, he was telling me that Andy Serkis, the director of the film, yeah. he had a broken leg and he was directing with a broken leg for the whole film. Hilarious. So he's a yeah, poor, poor bloke. Hilarious. So, bless him. <laughs> Uh, how about the Kit Knight Rider car? What about it, Duncan? I have got it here. Uh, we've only up to uh, the first four stages at the moment. I do believe some people have got from stages three to six. But when my next ones come, I should have up to stage eight. But I haven't had a notification. As a matter of fact, I can't actually get on the fan home site to check where my deliveries are. I never have been able to. So I don't know what's been going on there. Uh, would you like a, an assembly cushion like this to put your builds on? I would love one. Yes, uh, Ian. Phil would like one. There you go. What color? <laughs> what 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 color is it? What what color available? So I, I I said to Ian that so I've got the blue one here, but I said a gray is good because it's good for the cam. A gray so, would be great. Yeah, gray. You know you know we Ian, <laughs> gray. <laughs> but I want to pay for it. He, he wants to pay for it, Ian. Okay, you, you know you know Phil's email address because you were emailing him when I you're building my workshop. <laughs> When you're having your secret Just squirrel tell moments, me, uh, tell me uh, where to PayPal you because I I I want to pay for it. <laughs> um. 
the Eddie Stobart's 140 issues now. I mean, I'm not doing it, Chris, but it'll be interesting to see what it looks like when it's finished. I did the trial, and to be honest with you, when I did the trial, the initial thing that was going through my head was, I don't think this has got enough recognition, so I don't know what the pickup's been like. I may be wrong. It may be a real big thing that's out in this country, but to me, it wasn't. Uh, it wouldn't be as big as what the Hogwarts was. But again, it might have been a licensing thing. I don't yeah. know if you can get licensed for just four issues and then... You no, it's, just, it, it's strange to go to all the money to fabricate all of that, yeah. print it, send it out, and then just stop it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It, does it's, it? it's a weird, it's a weird, uh, I mean, who are the investors who think that's a good idea? It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, no, it is. I've never figured it out. And it's only really Hashet that do that now. Um, yeah, I think it's just Hashet. Eagle Moss used to do it, but they don't do it anymore. No, it's just but... one of those bad ideas. Uh, hi Wayne, do you know if the last six issues of Battleship Bismarck come together or do they send the last two separately? Um, I think they send the last two separately, DRM, but they come quite quickly afterwards. So you haven't got to wait too for, too long for that. Um, the last issue is the power and the remote. And if you've seen the remote for the Bismarck, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a wonder. It's quite a big old thing with dials for every it's, single thing you can control. It's it's I mean, this is, this is a work of art. It's, it's extraordinary. It's one of the, the Bismarck's one of those models that you can just look at for hours and you'll see different details on it. It's such, such a lovely build. But uh, it's yeah. it's been a pain at times. And if you were on the Patreon stream last night, you see how much trouble I have with it. That's it's, a lot uh, of work. It was a nightmare. I was almost crying last night. <laughs> you have those moments when nothing's going on. It's, uh, do, you, do you count how many hours you actually spend on, on, on a model? Not really, no. I mean, the... Um, if we say that I'm building, if I take out editing time, each model can take anywhere between a half hour and an hour. The Bismarck sometimes an hour and a half. Uh, interesting. So, but the last ones are going to take way longer than that. From what I Because uh, my uh, DeLorean build, um, I put a full uh, eight hours in on, on uh, two days. Wow. Uh, and I got to fit stage 53 in That's 16 good. hours. That's good. I know someone um, did a, the, built the Millennium Falcon from scratch in one go. That's off. So, yeah. So that's that's something. So it, I suppose it can be done, but God, I don't know if you want to. That's because it's a, my eyes are really, oh. A question for Phil. Um, did you ever think that Paul McGann would still be a huge part of Doctor Who twenty five years later after the pilot didn't go to series? No, I didn't. I think it's awesome. He deserves it. And you know why they didn't actually cast him as the Doctor when they rebooted? I have no idea. Um, I was supposed to actually be involved in the reboot and I passed for a, a bunch of reasons, but uh, he's one of the most uh, incredibly talented uh, men I ever had the, the privilege to know and still know he's a, he's a friend. Uh, so I'm thrilled because uh, he deserves it. Just so you know, if you didn't know already, I believe um, Paul McGann is at the WOWS Comic Con this weekend. So uh, you can meet him. Not, uh, 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 yeah. Paul McGann, yeah, it's Paul McGann. He's definitely there at the Wales Comic Con. So uh, I'm not here for that. <laughs> uh, Chris Hurst, when are you going to buy the new Pr Prussia XL5 color print head changing 3D printer? Can you imagine that? that? You've loaded up five filaments of different colors for it to print. Wow. That would be cool. Chris, I want to get a resin printer. When I've seen the quality of what Jeff's printed here, some of the lights here, let me just show you this again. Um, you know what? It's uh, it's something that I'm gonna have to invest in. Mrs. World Away knows that it was the deal that I get the resin printer, she gets the overlocking machine. So uh, uh, that's our Christmas sorted out. <laughs> um, did you look for the Arado control column after the stream last night, Philip? No, it, it was minute. It's it's it was the size of like a, a hair on your arm. So when that pinged off, and I know it went behind the whole computer. <laughs> There was no way I was ever going to find that again. In fact, when you put the glass on, you can't even see where it would have been through the glass anyway. So it's not really a big deal. The big deal, as I said to Phil today, is my OCD knowing it's not there. <laughs> so, so it's just like, it's the, it's the Bob Ross moment. And that's, just, right. that's just our little secret. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Main, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't like to get a 3D printer, but know what a good one is. Oh, you would like to get one. Well, the the Creality uh, Ender 3 is probably a good one to start with. Um, most of the 3D printers now are, are pretty much easy to set up. Uh, it's when things go wrong that the problems are, because you, you had a problem with one of yours, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, but, you know, with me, 99% of it is human error. Uh, you, you know, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just not that inclined, but, uh, 
they are plug and play. I have the only cubic mono X yeah. and uh, it's, 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 it's a 300, 300 print base and it's fantastic. But you know what I found, which is really interesting. There really is things you can print in PLA and there's things that really need to be printed in resin yeah. because there is a huge difference in quality and detail when you're trying to do certain things on certain surfaces. Yeah, I think um, when it's, especially if it's really tiny parts, you're not going to get that detail. No, um, and I found, uh, well, when I was building the Doctor Who TARDIS, uh, there were some things I reprinted yeah. in resin and you just get a, a much better uh, result, but they're both equally valuable. They are definitely good. Uh, um, your Paul McGann was awesome in the Monocube Mutineer as well. Yeah, he was. That's my brother saying that. Wow, Michael. <laughs> um, <clears throat> suppose I won't see it, Wayne. I don't know what that is, uh, Roadrunner. Um, <laughs> oh, you're talking about the hatchet one. If I don't do it, you, you didn't listen to me close enough, Roadrunner. I'm building the wooden ship from Eagle Moss on the channel okay the other one i might be building but i'm building the eagle moss one on the channel um hashtag germany has the part work for the east german car the trade brand um devmar models i believe is building that john just like the eddie stobart for the uk the car will just be for germany customer base i'd never heard of it but i, I i've only heard of it through devmar uh, sebastian's channel um oh the bit that flew off last night yeah that's that's gone to the carpet monster through uh that's never to return again. <laughs> um, are you having trouble getting Ecto-1 build? Dark Knight, I don't know if you got the email, but it's been delayed for about two months. And I do believe that we might start hearing stuff next week. I believe it was booked into the warehouse at the beginning of this week. So uh, who knows? That's the news I had. But, uh, you know, only the only people again that can answer that will be Eagle Moss. Um, Reza printers are good, but I recommend an FDM. As a first printer, as resin is easier to set up for sure, but a bit of a learn curve. Yeah, you're probably right, Sunderex, because I asked you about the cleanup of that as well. No, you, you, well. you've got, yeah, you need a lot of stuff. Uh, I have a, I have a, a, a bath, a proper, uh, any cubic makes a bath, yeah. um, which I have a gallon of uh, alcohol in. Wow. Uh, and <laughs> um, so, and then that becomes a, um, um, a, um, a hardening station as well, because yeah. you need to harden it under a UV light or in sunlight. God. Uh, <laughs> but um, once you get into a, you've got to get into a workflow. That's the key. Yeah. Once you have a workflow, it's great. You can't be haphazard with it. You've got to have a workflow. How do you know how much resin you're pouring for a print, or do you just fill the vat up? <laughs> well, so there is a there's a limit line on on the vat itself, right, okay. but um, it, it will tell you how much resin you will need for the print. Right. But you always give it more than it needs, yeah. And you don't have to really worry about that because you'll know. You just fill it up to the minimum uh, line, right. and you're fine. Cool. And it will stop printing if it runs out of resin, and it won't hurt the print. Uh, I'm the Sage Ages Two Doctors, eleventh and thirteenth. US born in 1982. <laughs> Guys, not much Orca Bill going on. If you're going to need the bigger show, yeah, you're telling me. Well, the thing is, I mean, all we can really do tonight is show you because, to be honest with you, we need to put this together to see exactly where things are going to be going on this. And then we need to decide how we're actually going to start it. We, I think we, we decided earlier that we're going to do the internal cabin first yeah. and then build up from that. But, you know, from watching the film today and then thinking about what parts we want to fabricate. And I mean, the detail level, we, we want to get this to real detail level, yeah. don't we? So um, there's going to be a lot of things that you've seen tonight on stream in these bags, which uh, uh, we're going to be putting addition to this. So it's going to be on the channel. It's going to be on Phil's channel as well over on Spruverse. Uh, just type that into YouTube and you can find that out. Um, uh, but yeah, it's going to be an amazing build. Uh, take care, Lou. <laughs> you, you catch the rest of the telephone on demand. <laughs> 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 uh, Wayne, I look pasty compared to Phil. It's because I'm sitting underneath a light and Phil's not. That's that's all it is. <laughs> um, Saturday the 11th of December, Route 159, commemorative run. Several route masters going from Marble Arch uh, down the route. They meet up at the Ace Cafe for breakfast, then set off in ones and twos. David Bassett, you know what? I'm in London on the 11th of December. I'm actually watching the Muppet Christmas Carol. So uh, the Royal Albert Hall, and then I'm off to see the Book of Mormon in the evening. So that might be something to see. That could be a sight. Um, 
not been brought to tears yet with a DeLorean, but with the screws, wires and springs, lots of swearing. Thanks for all the help. Well, what you'll find in my videos is issue 91 was the pain, which I, I'm almost crying. And I think it made me ill because if you watch issue 99, you can see how like, I've lost my voice. I look rough. I think I had a flu at the time. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it went downhill after that issue. <laughs> Are you going to do the Titanic by Hashet? Uh, Kevin, I'm not going to be doing the Hashet by Titanic on the Titanic Hashet. I'm not going to be doing the Hashet Partworks Titanic on the channel. Okay? <laughs> uh, for the boat, are you going to break it for the shark? Only if things go wrong, Evelyn. <laughs> Phil has a neon tan. It's because he's underneath the neon light. And I can't change the colour of the light. <laughs> Uh, wait, are you still being in the Jag? You've only got three videos. The Jag, uh, I'm still waiting for pack two to come, but uh, in the printer behind Phil, just on the top there, there's the pack one engine. So that's uh, that's that's coming. Uh, I believe I was meant to get that this week or next week. It's on the way, I think. So, But you'll know, because if you've had notifications, you'll know that's coming too. Um, but there we go. We're all, we're all good. What time are we at? What time is the last train tonight? Is it? 11. Oh, right. We're good. Right. Okay. What time is it now? It's uh, half, half eight. So we're, we're good at the moment. Yeah. So, but the, um, we got 289 people in here. So what, what, what do you think of that Orca then? I mean, it's going to be a really exciting build. And what I said to Phil is I think I'm going to dedicate a day that we're going to be building this. So you can expect it on the channel, perhaps like uh, on, on the Friday. It'd be like Orca Friday or something. Um, Phil, you're going to be doing your own thing. I think... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I usually try to put out at least uh, one video a week because yeah. uh, it takes forever to prep everything. But um, I will try to, to, to do more. Um, but uh, it's it, this is going to take a tremendous amount of work. I mean, uh, I think step one for both of us is to really inventory everything, get it all cleaned up, and then uh, try to dry fit everything inside the cabin and make sure that that's all golden. And then we start go, going up from there. Just so you know, I forgot to mention this at the start of the stream. When the uh, the Jaws build starts, I've already done the uh, introduction for it. Uh, this is what it looks like. You're going to need a bigger boat. And there's something else I didn't tell you. I think I told the patrons yesterday that there is another build coming to the channel from next week. Uh, yeah, I've got the full collection. Someone just mentioned it in chat, which just jogged a memory, but I'm also starting to build this next week. So how amazing is that? That's, that's like, I think that's put my tally to 18 with the Orca. 18 builds in a row. That's a fun build. <laughs> it, 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 it is a fun build. But Phil built the DB5. But what do you, what, I mean? I think it's terrific. Uh, you know, I, I, I was very honest about it on my channel. So there are some, uh, a couple of small fit issues. And there's some color matching issues with some of the parts. But at the end of the day, it's a beautiful model. And, I, and I'm thrilled to have it in my collection. Uh, Phil's here till next week, Berg, this, I believe. Um, York were fantastic. Loved your Eagle Two videos, Phil. Oh, thank you. I've just watched his latest one. It's a, it's a pretty amazing thing. Was that a special effect you put with the steam? Was that? No, you, you know what? That that's a, uh, that's an app. Oh, is it? Yeah, that you can get. Um, wow. And um, I, I, I can tell you what the name of the app is. Uh, and uh, you just, you can overlay any video with it. Wow. Um, I just, I found it on TikTok, uh, because that's what you do. It's called, um. Here, hang on. Uh, hang on. It's in uh, uh, tomography, I think. Uh, it's called Motion Leap is the name of the app. There we go, Motion Leap. So if you saw that video that uh, Phil posted of the eagle with the, the, the smoke coming off of it, that was the, the app that was used there. Uh, Mr. Wayne, why are you not streaming on Twitch? And it's an option to stream on YouTube and Twitch. I believe I am. I've got two out of two things I'm streaming to at the moment, so I should be. If I'm not, I don't know what's happened there. You like that? You like draw some good actors in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, where did you get the DB5? Okay, Jacob, this is what's happening, which has been a it's been a marriage of convenience. This is now there's a there's a, a person that I know called Christian who lives in Spain and he's got the full set of the DB5. And uh, lucky for me, he's in the business where he travels to the UK, but he hasn't got time to build it. So I uh, he said. If you build it for me, you can put it on your channel. And then when the model's finished, I'll just take it back. And there's no time limit when I can do this. So it's a win-win. He's going to get a model and I finally get to build the DB5. Um, so it's been really convenient. And the two boxes got delivered yesterday. 
and I've already made the assets for it, so I'm eager to go on that. I've obviously seen the first six stages anyway, and I am aware it's a little bit like the Ferrari, that you've got to build parts and then you never use them again. Is that right? Correct. Right, okay, that's going to be a nightmare. What about the screws? Is there a way to... So there is a screw chart that is now uh, available from the um, from the group. Right. Okay. Um, and um, I can also uh, send you a PDF of it. Yeah. If, if you want it, um, I defy anyone to tell me uh, which screw is which. Okay. You really are guessing. And cool. even when they say to you, use a MF screw or whatever, yeah. And you take the screw and you you hold it up against the chart and you look, but it doesn't fit. Uh, no, no. So we have been coming up with the, the R2. Yeah, so there, it's, a bit, it's a bit of that. Right. But if I can get through it, anyone can get through <laughs> it. You certainly will be fine. But it, it, it is frustrating. Oh, I can't wait to build it. It's going to be good. But yeah, those screws, because they, they sent me a screw box. Right. They put them in. So I was like, oh, okay, how am I going to use this if you don't put any labels on it? No, there's no labels. Um, uh, Hi, G Wayne. Great to see you, Phil. And hi from Birmingham. How's it been, Birmingham, Paul? Uh, the original DB5 from Eagle Boss had a design flaw with the ejector seat. You, are, you know too well about that. Oh, you? very, very well. <laughs> the, the Master Lemon line, the reputation precedes it. <laughs> but you know what? At the end of the day, mm -hmm. I wouldn't use it. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, I there's no, there is no point. First of all, uh, the, the way the ejector seat actually works, is it's spring-loaded. Right, okay. So you're supposed to push down on it and let go. Okay. It doesn't make any no. sense. It's not like you can push a button exterior of the car and watch it fly. Oh, I thought that's what it was. No. Oh, so right. the roof panel is, is just simply loose. It just sits on the top of the car. Right. Uh, so you're supposed to pop off that panel, yeah. set it to one side, and just simply push down on the ejector seat and it comes out. Oh, my God. It doesn't fly out. Wow. I and so, wasn't aware. Uh, yeah, and so the, the, the actual pin and, 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 and uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you any of well, this. Well, well, no, well, what I, what I said to Phil is I want to, I want to see these problems for myself. And then when I, when I can't figure out what's going on, then I'll be referring to Phil or the Facebook group. Because yeah. uh, I understand it did have its issues. So, um now, Eagle Moss are aware I'm building it, but I don't think it's available in America. It's sold out. Yeah, it's sold out. And but it's I'll definitely tell you, not available in the UK. Uh, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Steve who has a scale kit review, scale yeah. model kit review, SMKR. Yeah. He's an awesome human being. He builds the car, and he's a great teacher. Oh, excellent. Uh, so I, uh, I, if, if you decide you need, you, you, you don't want to get lost. Because, if you see me crying I, I, again. Yeah, well, yeah. I tell you, because there's a couple of times you'll cry. Oh, you, God. <laughs> when they put out a magazine that is not what you're building, it's like, what was the point? Uh, DRN, hey, when, how do you join the Patreon channel? Well, DRN, on the end of every single video, there's a link to the Patreon channel. And every Wednesday, we do a link for Patreon so you can follow the videos on Patreon. Plus, I do some behind the scenes videos on there as well about uh, what's going on in the world of Wayland. Um, you bought a half completed DB5 last year, restoring it at the moment. I believe that's what this was, David, originally. The the guy that I got it from was actually bought three. Um, so, uh, you know, it'll get one built. Hello, John builds iconic military models. Watch the via, uh, the video on demand, John, because we were chatting about you earlier on. You wasn't expecting to see Phil there. Yeah, well, he's here in person. Hey, John. It's, it's not a, a green screen or anything. He is actually here. <laughs> and let me tell you, it is not round the corner. you got to work really hard to get to Corby. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially from California. <laughs> um john this is what we're building the orca and this is just the main base of it but again watch the video on demand you'll see all of that but it's pretty impressive but we were talking about you putting the metal plates on your trumpet to titanic um really pretty amazing what you've done there um screws going into metal are different to ones going into plastic uh self tappers ah right okay the plastic ones are the self tappers then they're the ones with the threads that are spaced out on them I, you know what, David? I've never saw that association before. Did you no, know I didn't no? think about it. That makes all the sense in yeah, the world. You still need the oil. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the new Doctor Hill Who series? Have you watched any? Oh, uh, no comment. No comment. Yeah, I, 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 the, the last Doctor Who I watched was back in Tom Baker days and Peter Davidson days. You know, so, um, <laughs> my, my grandfather used to say to me, "If you have nothing nice to say, say nothing." <laughs> so I, I, I will say nothing. I, I love Doctor Who back in the day with, with those gear. But I think I think it's like Bond. If you were brought up in a certain area of Bond, you have your favourite. See, I love Roger Moore. Right. I, I like Roger Moore over Sean Connery. Right, but right. I think I reckon if you were born earlier. I think that's true. Yeah, I think that's true Connery's of every, uh, yeah, everybody. Yeah. And, and that's uh, that's the way it should be. Yeah, no, definitely. 
But saying that, I thought Daniel Craig's Bond was brilliant. I, I, I do question what, what's been going on in the last films he's done because it seems like they've made that as a complete standalone series to the whole Bond thing. Uh, and I'm surprised, well, I mean, how many people, am I giving spoilers away? Do you reckon if I tell people what's going on? How many people have seen Bond? I don't care. Uh, no? I was so angry with that film. Look, look, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear, put your fingers in your ears now, yeah? But they killed him off at the end. Which doesn't make any sense to me because the next very next thing, about three minutes later when the credits roll, is James Bond will return. And you're thinking, <laughs> what? I just saw him get blown to bits. So even if it's going to be another actor, which we could, if we dispel belief and believe, OK, he's this guy's James Bond now, which we've been doing for all the, last, all the other James Bonds. I, I don't know if I could dispel the belief that I just saw this guy blown up and then he's absolutely fine in the next film. Unless... They're just going to reboot it again. And in the next, like, next five series of the films, he's going to die again in a completely well, different What way. was the point of, I mean, another spoiler. Yeah. Uh, what was the point of saying, well, you're retired, so we gave you a double O number to someone yeah. else. <laughs> and actually, that was not the point of the franchise. Right. You have lost the plot. And if you're not interested in trying to figure out how to actually tell a spy movie, yeah. then don't write it. Well, my, my brother, I'm, I'm surprised he isn't shouting me at chat. He came up with the biggest plot hole of that film of all time. Yeah. And he's saying about the nanites that are in his blood. Right. And how it affects Blofeld and it affected everyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's wearing an EMP bolt, pulse watch. Right. And when it goes off, surely it would have killed all the electric nanites oh, in his body. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course. Who knows? <laughs> well, don't start throwing logic at this No, 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 no. <laughs> David, you're still shocked at the end of No Time Tonight. It's crazy. It's the same as Star Trek, right? I used to hate Deep Space Nine until I actually watched it. Cried my eyes out of the final episode. The best ending of Star I love Deep Space Nine. Yeah. I loved Voyager. I couldn't really get into Enterprise, and I just don't like Discovery. So. <laughs> I think I think Deep Space Nine was totally underrated. Yeah, I loved the show. It was yeah. a brilliant show. Um, lots of people were saying they were they killed off Bond during one of Sean Connery's films too. Yeah, but it, that that was part of the plot line because he wasn't he wasn't killed off, was he? He wasn't really dead. That was in um, You Only Live Twice, wasn't it? So yeah. they. But uh, there you go. What kind of CA uh, are you planning to use? I know uh, JB World is one of Lou's favourites. What, what, see, I don't know what CA. What do you use in America? Because we we got different brands. Out here. So um, you know, to me, they're all much of a muchness. Right. I think the difficulty is is uh, some of them for some reason uh, react very different to kicker. Yeah. Different kickers. You can't mix kickers. Yeah. Because uh, they get too hot and uh, they, they 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 don't work. But it really depends on on what you're using it for. You know, yeah. there's um, there's gels for PE. Right for photo etch, you use a little gel and that works wonders. Mm -hmm. um, and um, for this kind of a kit, uh, I would just definitely re recommend any decent medium viscosity. But you know, yeah. very little bit, it it'll bite and it won't go anywhere. Yeah, I noticed that on the ET. It, yeah, I mean that that was bonding big time. Uh, <laughs> Michael, my brother's like he could chat. He, he he kept saying I have to watch this film again because like he didn't know if he liked it or not. I think so. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> He could chat about Bond all day. Let's do it in LA. Look, he's he, he's just trying to get me to go to Vegas. Yeah. Look, it's not me you need to talk to. It's Mrs. World Away, and you know that. I'm not even going there. Trust me. <laughs> Ian Fleming, uh, Fleming was apparently involved with black propaganda during World War II. I don't know, uh, Craig, about all of that. I no. haven't got a clue. Uh, Deep Space Nine was great, but Babylon, Babylon 5, you enjoyed that? Did you like that show? I did. Yeah? I did. Do you remember Alien Nation? Of course. Oh, I used to love that. Yeah. That was, that Don't, was yeah the, the milk made them drunk. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, it was. It was clever. <laughs> um, what's that? Me too. Shane was never fond of what happened in the long run to Captain Cisco. I've heard it will follow up in the Picard series. I don't know what the plot line for the Picard series uh, part two is. I know you struggled with the first one because we were talking about that earlier, wasn't we? Very so, hard to uh, hang into. Yeah. Very hard. I do agree. I don't know what... what it, it, it started well and then it just seemed to be one of... It seemed like they were dragging it out. I don't know. I don't, I don't think they knew what to do for him. Um, Phil, did you say gel type CA for photo etch? Yes. Yes, Ed Hughes. Uh, it would be great if they start the next Bond film with the explosion behind him and a new actor in the water. <laughs> Haven't you watched it again? Like the bomb actually falls on him. They they were trying to. I mean, short of like showing limbs falling at the camera, I'm sure they were trying to say, yeah, he's definitely dead. He ain't coming back from it. Is Stargate TV show any good to watch? I, you know what, I've never seen any Stargate, even the Kurt Russell film. I've never seen. The well, the the first movie is fantastic. Yeah. Now, by the way, if you want to see a young James Spader, 
Wow. Um, you know, for Black, yeah. uh, Black, he yeah. is, he plays this sort of fumbling uh, cartographer mm -hmm. and he is amazing in the film. The film's a lot of fun. Wow. Um, the, the television series, you know, it, 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 it was done um, on a very low budget. So it's, 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 it's a little wobbly set-ish kind of Doctor <laughs> Who, you know, thing. But if you can get past it, uh, good characters. Wow. Yeah. That and it's uh, uh, Richard Dean Anderson from MacGyver. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. No, that, it, it's definitely one. I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to watch Blade Runner and like it. I don't know if you heard. I I just can't get into the film at all. The original hours and well, like. it's funny yeah. you should say that because I watched 2049 on the on the plane coming over. Yeah. Um, and it's like, wow, that is a what a train wreck that is. <laughs> because I built the case spinner, you know, from yeah, that yeah, film. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a great model. Um, but uh, no, just <laughs> dark and and ponderous I, I don't know i don't know what it is about just the original one as well it's just something about the story i couldn't even get through the film yeah. but and that's why i keep trying it see I, I i was the same with 2001 when i watched that i just couldn't get through until you start figuring out what the point of the film is and i watched it recently a couple of months ago i absolutely loved it right and mainly because you built the evo and i was like that's that's amazing and i forgot about that whole scene yeah yeah it? and i, I it's, it's a great movie but i think yeah. The age that I watched it at the time, I didn't really get it because it just seemed like... No, but you know what's interesting about that is, is Arthur C. Clarke, when he, when he wrote that original book, mm -hmm. he was really talking about um, man's emotional connection to the, the, the universe. Yeah. And how would we react if we actually made contact? Yeah. Like, what, what, would, what would that be like? Mm -hmm. And so that was what really because he was a psychologist by trade and that's what he was really trying to get into. And that's probably one of the only films I've seen as part from Firefly TV series where right. space is quiet. Right. You know, have you noticed that's that, exactly no, right. Yeah. Which it, it is. It, yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> space 1999 is great. No, definitely. Definitely. Um, you grew up with Space 99 and Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I need to rewatch it. I will, but it, it's been too close to me watch, re watching it last time. I'm trying for the sake of Lou, Lou Dal Meso, but uh, it, it, it's not working on me at the moment. <laughs> Wayne, I saw the original kit of the ship from the black hole at a scale model show over the weekend, but they wanted 300. Was that at the Telford one? We were talking about that earlier as well. The um, David, you sent me the sorry, you sent me the um, pictures from it. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to be able to. David, I'll put them on stream on Tuesday because I haven't set them up, but. Uh, are you talking about the um what's it called the cygnus wasn't it the, yeah. the ship from black hole yeah, the yeah. big cygnus or the one that they they were in when they approached that ship the cygnus he says that yeah i love the black hole film as a matter of fact look i was uh mentioning this earlier i've got some in here these are some of the original trading cards i've got oh that's amazing i've got the whole set down here. that's hilarious i keep that i keep that on me here they make a picture on the other side. Yeah, yeah. But you're talking about to... that. <laughs> I love trading cards. They do. They, they, some, they used to smell of bubble gum. Right, 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 I've right. still got some of the, the wax paper like, that went around. Oh, them. that's great. It's like, that's awesome. That's the only thing that survived my childhood, I think. So. <laughs> yeah. Blake Seven. What did you think of that? I liked it. I like Blake Seven. Yeah. I always remember the, uh, the How Much Wood Would a Wood Chuck Chuck episode with the computer trying to, trying to confuse it. Wait, have you watched Night Rider 2008, Val Kilmer's kit? Nope. Pass. Haven't seen that one. You attempted. David, you should have bought it. If it's black hot, it's retro. Anything retro at the moment, you need to buy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Phil, if you're Doctor Who got the series, uh, who would you have liked to cast as the next Doctor when McGann's time come to an end? Oh, I have no idea. God, that's a, uh, that's a tough question. one. You know what? It's like asking who should be the next Doctor Who. I always thought the guy, I don't know the guy's name, but I thought the guy from Death in Paradise and he was in Love Actually. Yeah. That guy would have made a good Doctor. I think yeah. he's like got that quirkiness as yeah. a Doctor. Yeah, yeah. But um, who knows? It's, uh, I don't know if you remember that when they announced Peter Capaldi as the Doctor, it was such a big deal in this country, they had the announcement at the cinema. Yeah. So you could go to the cinema to watch a half-hour uh, BBC uh screening of who the new doctor's gonna be i love that which um uh but the popularity doesn't seem to have gained that since the the future doctors i don't know what the what the formula is for doctor who. i think here's what i would say about that i think you have to be very very careful that you don't burn a franchise out yeah it needs to rest yeah so if if i was the bbc i would do one or two series then i would bank a couple of series and i would hold them yeah because this saturation burns people out it's yeah. too much 
Uh, take care, Svi. I'm glad you enjoyed Ghostbusters and and you found it emotional. I'll give you my opinions when I've seen it. So uh, there, you, <laughs> there you go. Take care, Svi. Um, I haven't built anything since the Airfix, ki Airfix kids as a kid. I've started again now with the R2G2. Well, I, w I do wish you luck, uh, luck, Jim33. When I'm building this space shuttle, well, that's something I haven't done since I was a kid as well. So it's great to get back to modeling. Now, you, you say at the end, Phil says at the end of every end of every video, build something. And we were just talking about that today, saying, you know, you can actually just transcend everyday life by throwing yourself into a model, having your own little model space, and being able to build something and create something that you can actually look at the end of the day and think i've created that with my own hands yeah and so it's such a, it's such a good feeling red dwarf we uh, who doesn't like red dwarf dave <laughs> genius brilliant show yeah uh i would go do the war doctor for two seasons i i do I, yeah that was a great the old war doctor john hurt's not with us anymore though <laughs> we met charlotte met john hurt we got a picture of her and john very which, talented yeah man. She went for a stage of uh, meeting everyone, so she got like Bernard Cribbing, Sebastian oh, awesome. uh, she, she she loves she she was real. When I was saying about the Spain delivery yeah, and yeah. Doctor Who, they they were the Doctor Who figurines. That she oh, had. hilarious! But uh, you grew up watching Battlestar Galactica, Buck Rogers, Space Nineteen Ninety Nine, Logan's Run. I remember that. My favourite show is slightly smiling. <laughs> uh, on the modern Doctor Who, my favourite episode is Blink with David Tennant. I haven't watched any of the recent ones, to be honest with you. I tried to start watching the Matt Smith's ones all because, as we just mentioned, that my daughter was into that. Um, the snowman freaked me out. And those statues that, you know, if you don't watch them, they move. That was a bit scary. Oh, that, yeah, that used, to, that used to freak me out. <laughs> but Cybermen in the sewers was really, as a kid. Every, every time every time you say, Jeff, Jeffrey Fink says, every time you say build something, he has to start making a new design. <laughs> Jeffrey, believe me, with this Orca build, we've been writing lists, <laughs> so you, you never know. I love that man; he's awesome. We all love you, Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you remember Star Cops? I don't remember that one. Star Cops? No. No. Uh, I can't tell how great it feels to get back to modelling after a forty-year break. We were talking about this on email, Dave. It, it is. It's something that sometimes it's a lost skill and a lost craft. What with the the advent of computers and online and instant gratification and stuff, to be able to sit down and create something is like a, a, there's a different sort of like enjoyment out of it. I think, but uh, I mean, you you love it. You spend a lot of time in your workshop. Oh, I never get bored. I, I just I'm like it. I just my face lights up. You know, it's interesting. You do get to a certain point in in a build where perhaps something's not working or you you get you get fatigued yeah. with it and i hear a lot of guys say this and they say they've lost their mojo and they walk away i say don't walk away yeah. pick up another kit <laughs> put that thing away and go do something else and you know just keep put your mind on something else it's it's being able to get in front of your bench and just play with something build something paint something glue something ah oh, never get tired of it <laughs> um and when do you know the TV show UFO? Yes, I do know you. You must know UFO as well. Not only yeah. do I know UFO, um, doing uh, some research for my Eagle build, I discovered <laughs> that uh, the reason why Space 99 exists is because UFO was cancelled mm -hmm. and all of those sets and all of that equipment had to go somewhere. Wow. And Jerry Anderson convinced the network who cancelled his show, UFO, yeah. that they wanted him to sort of revamp the show into something else wow and so that's how space 1999 came about <laughs> i do remember ufo we, they had them on video in blockbusters i never got a chance to see them but yep. any of that old stuff i i do I, I do like the retro stuff back in my day though it's things like the time tunnel and uh i love time yeah, tunnel. we yeah. were talking about erwin allen yeah yeah, yeah please definitely. don't get me started <laughs> Well, when Sky first come to the UK, the actual um, the the channel uh, you did before Sky One, that was the shows that they used to be leading with some of the older and oh, and fantastic! It was brilliant. It was never get tired of those. Um, you had yeah, you had that on DVD. Shame it got cancelled after only one season. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm really w uh, worried you wouldn't be able to go back to morning. Glad to say I still have the nag. There you go. You never lose it. It's like riding a bike. Uh, Scott Mitchell, a lot of things have evolved over the years, but Power Rangers, back to what Power Rangers, Power Rangers. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, I'm afraid. Oh, and Jerry Anderson, you ought to look up the Secret Service. You like the old Jerry Anderson. <laughs> okay, listen, folks, uh, I'm going to leave it there because we're approaching nine o'clock. So we've done almost a two hour stream tonight and it's been it's been a lot of fun. I have to say, I hope you like the Orca. It's great Phil joining. 
in the workshop. And I'm glad you finally got to see oh, it. Oh, it's, it's such a pleasure so, to be uh, here and so much fun. Uh, it's just it's been a it's just been a day I'll never forget. We'll, uh, we, 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 I'm going to return the favour and I'll be in Phil's workshop next time. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have yeah, to in your workshop. How are we going to do a live stream from there? You have to figure that out. You got good internet in there, have you? Like, uh, yeah, very good internet. There you go. We'll, we'll figure something out. Okay. I'm sure. <laughs> so listen, take care, everyone. I said if you haven't watched the video on demand, please check it out because at the start of the stream we were showing off the Orca build, and that's going to be appearing on both of our channels. For me, just search World of Wayne in YouTube, and obviously for Phil, just search Spruverse. And it'll bring you top of the list and you'll be able to see that. But listen, thank you all for joining tonight and take care. See you later.